Just kidding. Growing up in Orlando, Florida means that the 90s were defined by three things for me. Shaq. Nickelodeon. And of course, Disney. This was also an era during which Orlando was being touted as America's next big production hub for film and television, dubbed Hollywood East, Hollywood weather without the Hollywood overhead. On May 1st, 1989, Disney's MGM Studios theme park, or Hollywood Studios as it's called today, hosted its first studio tour. The magic of animation attraction provided guests with an insider's look into the animation process by allowing them to watch animators at work in a seemingly authentic environment. Feature Animation Florida, as it was called, originally functioned to supplement work for the Burbank, Paris, and Tokyo studios on Disney classics like The Lion King and The Little Mermaid. Eventually, Orlando went to produce its own full-length features, including Mulan, Lilo and Stitch, and Brother Bear. Joanne Adams is a professor at UCF's School of Visual Arts and Design, as well as head of the animation program at the Florida Interactive Entertainment Academy. So um, I got that job in Ink and Paint, and um, I'm a really, I have a really good eye for color. So I did a lot of color mixing and inking, hand inking, painting. And so it's a very skill set oriented job. And um, as the studio grew, uh, we originally started, they thought it was going to be like an attraction, just an attraction at uh, MGM Studios is what they called it at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, the first thing we did was start painting on Little Mermaid because they, rec you know, they, they realized that oh, we got all these people that are trained, why not actually use them? <laughs> <laughs> Not just props for our show, you know? And so the first thing we did was Little Mermaid, and uh, at that time, the people at the studio didn't really realize how what we were really working on, mm -hmm. and they threw us a rap party, and we're like, wow, this is a really nice party. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> Universal Studios Orlando opened its sound stages the same year, which was 1989, if you forgot. At the time, Universal had the two largest sound stages in the world, housing rides like Jaws in addition to operating as production sites for shows like the Leave It to Beaver remake. As an incentive for relocation, Universal built Nickelodeon Studios for free, charging the company no operation costs so long as it agreed to shoot seven days a week year-round. Park visitors could participate in Nickelodeon shows like Double Dare, Slime Time Live, All That, or Keenan and Kel, either as audience members or contestants. Both Nickelodeon Studios and Feature Animation Florida closed their doors in 2004. There's a few reasons why Florida appealed to the film and TV production industries, and vice versa. First, low labor costs. Florida is a right-to-work state, so workers don't have to be union members, meaning they can be paid less. An LA Times article does cite that in 1989, 90% of production staff in Florida belonged to the Screen Actors Guild and were paid accordingly. Second, the ease of acquiring permits. Shooting on Disney property required no permits because of its status as an unincorporated district. The third reason is cheap land and less competition over shooting locations than out west. Fourth reason, tourism incentives. And fifth, tax incentives. These last two reasons are especially important, but we'll get back to those. Central Florida also posed some challenges too. Because of the smaller talent and labor pools, a lack of paid work for extras, weak child labor laws, 
a flat landscape that doesn't lend well to recreating different outdoor settings, and the loss of tax incentives. More and more production work is moving out of California. Florida's potential revenue has been scooped up by Georgia and North Carolina, who have strengthened their tax incentive programs. These two southern states now join Los Angeles and New York as some of the country's largest TV and film production hubs. It's easy to wonder why Florida would let this opportunity pass, especially with the abundance of talent emerging from highly regarded film and animation programs at the University of Central Florida and the Florida Interactive Entertainment Academy, Ringling College of Art and Design, Full Sail, and Florida State University. So most of the work that reaches Florida is on-site shoots rather than long-term productions. People who work in the industry will always follow the work where it exists. And for now, it always exists in Hollywood. A 2013 report found that using incentive programs to support production work in Florida can stimulate the state economy through film-induced tourism, which breaks down into three categories. Serendipitous film tourism, where people just end up in film or TV destinations by chance. General film tourism, where people don't specifically seek out locations related to film, but they participate in film tourism activities once they're there. And specific film tourism, where people actively seek out the locations depicted in film or television. Instead of trying to make Hollywood the new Orlando West, Florida should concentrate on what it does best, tourism. The production work will follow.